Dear friends, namaste. That's from Neek Wake right in front of you. And friends, here I shall be telling you about pranayamas for asthma, for lung congestion, for lung-related disorders, and for improving the capacity of your lungs. Now, lungs are very important for us. If we have strong lungs, we can have a strong immune system. So it's very important to take good care of your lungs. Now, there are several good pranayamas what we can practice to improve our lung capacity. But here I'll be talking to you about two of the very important ones. The first one is referred to as Kapal Bhati. Now, Kapal means the skull. Like this is the Kapal, the skull. And Bhati means to shine. So, when the Indian yogis, they used to do this pranayama for long lengths of time, they saw that their lung capacity really increased. They had a glow on their face, a glow on their eyes, and there was a remarkable improvement in their immunity system. So that's how they kept the name as Kapal Bhati. I've seen in the United States, in Canada, in many yoga centers, they refer to this pranayama as the skull shiner pranayama. So, uh, important pranayama for the lungs. Now, Kapal Bhati uh, can also be referred in simple terms as a forceful exhalation pranayama. That means, in this pranayama, you primarily work on forceful exhalations. Inhalations are going to be taking place on their own. They're going to be passive in this pranayama. We're going to be concerned with is the forceful exhalation part. That means each time we blow the air off, there should be a pressure of air flowing through the nostril regions. Now, the technique of doing this pranayama goes something like this. That first you're going to be keeping a palm like this, about six inches away from your nostrils. After that, the starting position is going to be that you take a deep breath in, you expand your abdomen like a big balloon. After that, you start exhaling with a gap of about one solid second between two forceful exhalations. That means you exhale, then you mentally count one, two. Then you exhale, then one, two. You exhale, then one, two. Now the exhalation should be forceful, like this. So you saw that there I was keeping a gap of one second between two forceful exhalations and that is called stage one. So after you do a couple of reps of stage one, say 50, 20, 80, whatever you can easily do, get back to your relaxed abdominal breathing. Now relaxed abdominal breathing means that you're going to be breathing in to the count of three, you're going to be breathing out to the count of three and relaxing yourself down. After doing a couple of uh, reps of your relaxation exercise, you move on to stage two of this pranayama. Now in stage two, what we do is that we increase the speed of the forceful exhalation. That means now there's just going to be a gap of half a second between two forceful exhalations. Earlier, we had a gap of one solid second. Now it's going to be half a second. That means the counting would go something like this. One, two, three, four, five. That's how it should go. So it would go something like this. You got to keep your palm like this, about six inches close to your nostrils. The reason I'm keeping the palm six inches close is that when I exhale off, the pressure of air should be felt in the palm region. If the pressure is not there, you got to increase the force. Because if the force is not there, you're going to get no benefits out of that. So the pressure of air should be felt in the palm region as you exhale out with force. So second stage would be that you take a deep breath in, expand your abdomen like a big balloon, and then go like one, two, three, four, the forceful exhalation. So something like this, friends. So this is stage two. Now friends, you must have seen that I'm just working on forceful exhalations. Inhalations are happening on their own. So that's what you need to remember. That inhalation should happen on their own. And all what your concern is with forceful exhalations. Okay. Now, after you did the second stage, you again move back to 
your relaxed abdominal breathing, which is breathing in three, breathing out three, and relaxing yourself down. After doing a couple of reps of your relaxation exercise, you move on to stage three of this pranayama, and that is called as the rapid kapalbhati round. That means now we reduce the gap from half a second to zero, no gap. That means now they're going to be done very rapidly and there's going to be no gap between two forceful exhalations. And that's going to be your stage three of Kapalabhati. So it would go something like this. Again, you keep your palm about six inches close to your nostrils as I'm doing right here. You'll take a deep breath in and that would be your starting position. That means you'll be taking a deep breath in. Your abdomen would expand like a big balloon. And then after that, you will breathe out at a very rapid force as if the train is running at its full speed. So that's the simile, the rapid exhalation round. It would go like this. <laughs> So that's the rapid Kapalbhati round. Now after you complete your rapid Kapalbhati round, you get back to your relaxation exercise, breathe in three, breathe out three, relax yourselves down, and then again get back to stage one, which is one second gap between two forceful exhalations. So for example, if you're doing Kapalbhati for 10 minutes, that would not mean that you're continuously doing it for 10 minutes. That would mean you're doing stage one, you're relaxing, stage two, relaxing, stage three, relaxing, back to stage one. And whatever time you're spending in relaxation, that should also be included as a part of your practice time. So that was friends, Kapal Bhati, and you must try doing this pranayama at home every day because this really helps in increasing your lung capacity. Okay, now let me talk about pranayama number two, which is important for lungs, and that's a very simple one now. That's called Sukh Pranayama Stage 2. Now, Sukh Pranayama has two stages, Stage 1, Stage 2. Now, Stage 2 is the one which is good for improvising your lung capacity, to enhancing your lung capacity, to bolster your lung capacity. Now, that would go something like this, that you would sit comfortably in your whatever posture you can. After that, you'll close your eyes and you'll keep one hand on your abdomen so that you just know that you're breathing right. Now, the exercise would be that you would be breathing in from both your nostrils to the count of five and abdomen would slowly expand outwards like one, two, three, four and five and it should slowly expand outwards. After that, without any pause, you're going to be breathing in to the count of 10 very, very slowly and your abdomen goes all the way in. Now the time taken in exhalation would be just the double of that of inhalation. So that means each time you're going to be breathing in to the count of 5, your abdomen would expand outwards and each time you would be breathing out to the count of 10 your abdomen would contract inwards and that would complete one round of that. Now friends, you got to take care of two, three very important things as you do this pranayama. Number one, number one is that the breathing should be abdominal. It should not be the other way around. Abdominal breathing means that each time you breathe in, the abdomen expands outwards. Each time you breathe out, it moves inwards. The first thing you got to keep in your mind is that practice abdominal breathing. Second important thing, remember to follow the ratio patterns. Now many times what people do is they breathe in by the count of five and they breathe out by the count of eight. So by the time they reached eight, they expelled all their breath out. And when they repeat nine and ten mentally, they're just pulling their abdomen in. But the breath has already been released. So I do tell them, listen friends, we are not doing a physical exercise, we are doing a cellular exercise. We want to pressurize ourselves so that they get detoxified nicely. So what you need to do is that when you breathe out, you got to breathe out very, very slowly. So that you slowly, gradually breathe out all the way to the count of 10. Again, remember there should be no pauses in the entire exercise. Many a time what people do is they breathe into the count of five and when they start breathing out, 
they start breathing out in bits and parts. Like they breathe out a little bit, they have a hold, they breathe out a little bit, they have a hold. If you do like that, you cannot exert the cellular pressure. So you got to breathe out without any hold and breathe in without any hold. The whole exercise should be done in a flow. So remember, there should be no pauses in the entire exercise. Now friends, remember that both these pranayamas are great for making your lungs strong, for improving your lungs capacity, for asthma, for uh, COPD, for emphysema. Again, let me tell you that I have over 1900 videos on YouTube. So you can also check me out over there. The YouTube address is youtube.com slash And I do take online courses on pranayama, food therapy and meditation. So if you're interested in doing any online courses also with me, you can directly contact my center. We are located at Delhi, India, and uh, the center cell number and WhatsApp number is 9910178140. So namaste friends, do take care of yourselves and have a great day ahead.